In 1984, a cat named Sabrina actually did fall from the 32nd floor of a New York City apartment, over 350 feet straight down onto solid concrete. You would expect that to be a tragic tale, right? But here is the twist. Sabrina survived with just a chipped tooth and a mild lung puncture. She was out of the hospital in 48 hours, back to life like nothing ever happened. And here is the kicker. Sabrina, as she fell from the 32nd floor, might actually have had a better chance of surviving than if she fell from, say, the 7th floor. Veterinary studies, like the famous 1987 Whitney Melhoff paper from the Journal of American Veterinary Medical Association, shows that cats falling from higher than 7 stories actually have better survival rates than those falling from 2 or 3 stories. This phenomena is called the high-rise syndrome. Of course, this doesn't mean that cats walk away unscathed. They still suffer injuries, but the surprising part is that their chances of surviving a fall increase beyond a certain height. A falling cat is influenced by primarily two key forces, gravity and air resistance. You might remember from one of our previous videos on how air resistance prevents raindrops from falling at the speed of bullets. Gravity pulls objects downward with a force equal to their mass times the gravitational acceleration, F equals mg, simple enough. Initially, when the object starts falling, it is only under the influence of gravity accelerating downwards. But as its speed increases, air resistance begins to build up. This drag force pointing against the direction of motion depends on a variety of factors. Higher the speed, higher the air resistance. Experiments and studies have shown that it goes with the square of the speed, a phenomena called as quadratic drag. It also depends on the density of air. Since more the air molecules per volume, more collisions with the falling object and therefore higher resistive forces. And of course, the cross-section area of the object should also play a role. Higher the cross-section surface area, more air it intercepts, hence higher the drag. That's the basic idea behind a parachute. Further, it also depends on the shape of the object, set differently how aerodynamic it is. All this can be coupled into an empirical proportionality factor, which I'm going to call C. Now, let's bring cats back into the picture. As the cat's speed increases, so does the air resistance. Eventually, something special happens. The downward pull of gravity balances perfectly with the upward push of air resistance. At this point, the net force on the cat vanishes and it stops accelerating further. This constant speed is called the terminal velocity. Terminal velocity can be derived by setting the two opposing forces equal to each other, which, if we rearrange, gives us an expression for this terminal velocity. And here is the important thing to remember. Larger the cross-section area, lower is this terminal speed. When a cat first starts to fall, it's scared. Its body tenses up, legs tucked in, and it's in a full fight or flight mode. In this position, the cat presents a smaller surface area to the air, meaning it accelerates downwards faster because there is less air drag. But as the fall continues, something interesting happens. Once the cat hits a significant fraction, say about 75% of its terminal velocity, it stops feeling that sensation of falling as much because acceleration has decreased significantly. Cats, just like humans, are sensitive to acceleration and not velocity. So at this point, they relax. And when they relax, they spread out their legs, flatten their bodies, and increase the cross-section area. This is what I like to call the terminal relaxation effect. By increasing the surface area mid-fall, cats reduce their terminal speed even further. This means 
they hit the ground at a much lower velocity, significantly decreasing the force of impact and boosting their chances of survival. It's an elegant interplay of physics and instinct, and that's why cats can survive falls from astonishing heights. But there is more to the story. Cats are equipped with a built-in survival mechanism known as the cat writing reflex. This reflex allows them to reorient their bodies mid-air, ensuring they land on their feet. It's a fascinating demonstration of angular momentum conservation. By twisting their flexible spines and adjusting the rotation of their front and back halves independently, cats can rotate themselves without any external torque. It's an incredible trick of physics and biology working together. I went ahead and wrote some Python code to help us simulate and visualize this. To see why this is possible, we ran a simulation comparing two scenarios. Imagine two cats, just like Sabrina, falling from the 32nd floor balcony. One cat stays tense the entire way down while the other experiences the terminal relaxation effect. Here is what we found. As the simulation unfolds, you can see a critical switch happens after the cat has fallen through about seven floors when it hits about 75% of its terminal speed. It relaxes in response to this lower acceleration. At this point, the surface area goes up, practically doubling itself. And this seemingly simple action triggers a powerful shift in the physics of the fall. Without the relaxation effect, the tense cat continues accelerating until it reaches a terminal speed of about 24 meters per second. That's roughly 86 kilometers per hour, like speeding down a highway. In contrast, the relaxed cat, benefiting from the terminal velocity reduction, slows down to about 17 meters per second or about 60 kilometers per hour, similar to cruising through city streets. It might not sound like much, but that difference could be the line between severe injury and survival. The key all lies in the acceleration felt by the cat. At the very start, the cat's acceleration is nearly negative 9.8 meters per second squared thanks to gravity pointing downwards. But as drag force builds up, this acceleration begins to taper off. The real magic happens around two and a half seconds into the fall when the terminal relaxation effect kicks in. Suddenly, the cat's acceleration drops sharply, even turning positive for a brief moment. That's right, the cat is effectively slowing itself down, almost like hitting an invisible air brake. After this moment, the acceleration flattens out nearly to zero and the cat settles into a new, slower terminal velocity. The Whitney Melhoff study observed 132 cats that fell from various heights. Up to around seven floors, the severity of injuries increased with height. No surprise there. But after seven floors, the injury severity plateaued or even decreased. That's consistent with the physics that we just saw in our simulation as well. Of course, there is a caveat. This might also involve something called survivorship bias. Cats that did not survive higher falls probably would not even be part of this data. But hey, regardless, the physics does check out. So, what did we learn today? Cats might just be nature's accidental physicists, turning instinct into survival by mastering air resistance, terminal velocity, and angular momentum, all without ever opening a textbook. But let's be very clear. This isn't an invitation for your feline friend to audition as a stunt double. Keep those windows closed, those balconies secured, and your cats grounded, literally. Stay curious, keep scribbling, and I'll see you next time.